Okay, guys, this is uh, uh, sampling designs uh, part two. I'm just uh, I didn't want to make that uh, that other one too long. Although I can go the whole length, it's just uh, you can take a break between. Okay, so here's um, uh, so section D. Uh, call in opinion polls are an example of a voluntary response sampling. Okay. Uh, and voluntary response samples are biased because people with strong opinions, especially strong negative opinions, are most likely to respond. Like um, uh, the restaurant uh, suggestion box that I was talking about in the last video. All right. Uh, so here's section E. Uh, interviewing at the mall. This is another taking a sample. Uh, so we're this is example 5.3 on page 272. Okay, let's see if I can get rid of this a little bit or move it over anyways. Uh, right there. Okay, uh, manufacturers and advertising agents often use interviewers interviews at shopping malls to gather information about the habits of consumers and the effectiveness of ads. A sample of a mall shopper is fast and cheap. Mall interviewing is being propelled per primarily as a budget issue, one expert told the New York Times. Uh, but people uh, contacted at shopping malls are not the representation of the entire U.S. population. In general, you guys, people at shopping malls are, are more wealthy uh, and more likely to be teenagers or retired people. They're not uh, people like me. Uh, uh, moreover, mall interviewers tend to select neat and safe-looking individuals from the stream of customers. So decision bases on mall interviewers may not be reflect the preferences of all the customers. So, you know, for example, you guys, I don't like to go shopping. So you're not going to get my representation at the mall. And if you didn't want to get interviewed, uh, uh, dress up like some burly guy and just look mean and, and people leave you alone. Because they don't, they don't interview those people and they're a part of the population too. So uh, let me continue here. So uh, this is called convenience sampling. And it chooses individuals the easiest uh, way to reach them. And malls are, are uh, you know, or you know, uh, is a good convenient way to, to and a bad uh, sample actually, but it's nice and convenient. So both voluntary response samples, like the call-in uh, things, um, uh, and the convenient sampling, chooses a sample that is almost guaranteed not to represent the entire population. Okay. Section H, a simple random sample, and we're going to use SRS for the rest of this year, of size N consists of N individuals from the population chosen in such a way that every set of N individuals has an equal chance to be selected. So if I was going to you know, select uh, five people at our school to represent uh, you know, our school, um, each group of five would have to be equally likely to be selected. You know? Or say I'm going to do a GPA analysis of, of our school. Well, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a fair uh, uh, pick if I picked you know my AP students. It would have to be a fair pick amongst everybody you know freshmen through through seniors in high school. Okay, uh, so how to choose an SRS, and we're going to show this by an example. Now there's other ways, but we're going to focus on just this example for now. And I know there's other ways in your graphing calculators that we'll do later, but for now we're going to use uh, the table in the back of your book. Okay, so I, I need you to get your table. So if you don't have your book, I mean, if you don't have your textbook with you, then pause this right now and go get your textbook. Okay, you're going to need it. Okay, and then uh, when you're ready, uh, uh, open your table to the back of the book, and you should find a table B. Um, now, I noticed a few of my students didn't have that in the back of the book, so if you don't, then we need to trade books immediately, because we're going to use table B for the rest of this year, for a good chunk of it anyway. So find table B, okay? And this table is a table of just random digits. You don't have to write this down. I'm just telling you this. The numbers here have no meaning. There's no order. The digits are in groups of five and numbered in rows just to make it easy to read. So there's, I mean, they could be just all crammed together, but it would be too hard to read it that way. So they're just random digits on there, okay? So and you have to make sure that uh, all labels, so I want you to write this down, all labels have the same number of digits. So for example, uh, one digit for a population would be up to nine members. Two digits for populations would be up to 99 members, and three digits for populations up to 999 members. So 
four digits would be up to populations of 9,999 and so on. So one could, uh, one could be uh, 01 or 001 or 0001 and so on, okay? I don't know if you can see that and so on. Okay, so section J. Here's, uh, we're going to see example 5.4 on page uh, 276. Okay, so uh, Joan's small accounting firm serves 30 business clients. Joan wants to interview a sample of five clients in detail to find ways to improve client satisfaction. Uh, to avoid bias, she chooses an SRS of size 5, and we're going to use table B in the back of the book. Okay, so step one, um, uh, give each client a numerical label using uh, a few digits as, as few digits as possible. Two digits are needed to label 30 clients because 30 is a two digit number. So, so uh, the first client is going to be client 01. So we're going to use the labels 01, 02, 03, blah, 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 all the way up to uh, 29 and 30. Okay, and that'll represent our 30 of them. So it is also correct to use the label 00 to uh, 29. That's 30 digits. Uh, or you can even choose, um, say, uh, 30 all the way up to. Uh, what is it 59 yeah 59 so um, uh, so here's a, a list of the clients with the labels attached okay so uh, so she has you know all these uh, different clients from 01 being uh, a1 plumbing to 30 being Vaughn's video store uh, boy they hardly have video stores anymore with uh, our Netflix and stuff so step two is is to enter table B anywhere anywhere you want and read two digit groups and and suppose, so we're just using line 130 as an example, but you don't have to do that. But to follow the example of the book, we're going to go to line 130. So locate line 130 in the textbook. You might want to pause this for a second while you're locating it. Okay. And at line 130, you see these groups of five digits. Okay. And they're just in any order, you guys. All right. So, um, okay. And I just I highlighted it right there. So the first 10 two-digit number groups are in this line right here. So can you see the first two digit number is 69 and then 05 would be the next one and then 16 would be the next one and so on and so on and so on all the way to 17. Okay, you could also do this you guys. It's okay to do this. 69 for the first one and then 90 for the second one and 05 for the third one and 51 for the fourth one and so on and so on. Okay, you just have to be consistent. You have to be consistent, otherwise it wouldn't be random. Okay, so whatever two groups of two you're going to do, that's what you do. Okay, each successive two-digit group is labeled. Uh, the label 00 to 31 uh, uh, and 31 to 99 are not used in this example, so we'll ignore them. So like 69, we're not going to use that one, and 48 we're not going to use, and 87 because those are out of our group. So the first five labels between 01 and 30 uh, we can encounter in the table choosing our sample. Of the first 10 labeled in line 130, we ignore five of them because they're too high. They're big, they're over 30. So the others are uh, 05, 16, 17, 17, 17. And the clients labeled uh, 05, 16, and 17 go into the sample. And you ignore the, uh, the second and third 17s but that, because that client's already taken. Okay, so keep running your finger across line 130 and continue to line 131 if you need to until uh, five clients are chosen. Okay, um, so uh, the sampling and the clients labeled are, are those guys, and so uh, those are the people that you would pick. Okay, uh, section K to select a stratified random sample, uh, first divide the population into groups uh, of similar individuals, and they're called strata. Okay, then choose a separate SRS in each stratum and compare these SRSs to, fo to form a full sample. Almost done, you guys. Okay, uh, for example, a population of election uh, districts might be divided into urban, suburban, and rural stratas. Okay, and then so uh, last example, who wrote that song? And we're going to look at example 5.5 on page 278, and that's on my next slide. Okay, so a radio station that broadcasts a piece of music owns a royalty to the composer. The organization of composers called the ASCAP uh, collects these royalties for all its members by charging stations a license fee for the rights to play member songs. ASCAP has 4 million songs uh, in its catalog and collects $435 million in fees each year. How should ASCAP distribute this income among its members? 
by sampling ASCAP tapes about 600 or 60,000 hours from the 53 million hours of local radio programs across the country each year. Uh, radio stations are, str are stratified by type of community, metropolitan or rural, uh, geographic locations, New England, the Pacific, etc., and the size and the license fees paid to the ASCAP which reflects the size of the audience. In all, there are 432 of those strata. Tapes are made at random hours for randomly se uh, selected members of each stratum. The tapes are reviewed by experts who can recognize almost any piece of music ever written, and the composers are then paid according to their popularity. Okay, that's it, and thanks for hanging in there with me.